Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game that just finished from round 8 of this year's Tata Steel Masters. It is Alireza Firuja versus uh, world champion Ding Liren and uh, both of them are having an interesting event to say the least. Alireza already lost two games, um, uh, the one to women's world champion Ju Wenjun and Virit Gujarati, uh, but uh, he also won a lot of games and Ding uh, having a pretty, pretty, uh, you know, uh, neutralish tournament. He's currently on 50%, uh, and he did lose that one game to Pragnaranda. So both of them uh, would, of course, uh, love a victory here. And uh, as Alireza Firuja is one of the candidates of the 2024 Candidates Tournament, and the Ding is the world champion, uh, we could also be looking at a, a potential matchup for a World Chess Championship match. But we'll see how it goes. So let's check it out. Uh, I'm sure you guys already know what happened, as it's a very short game. Uh, let's dive straight into it. So well, it is uh, with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to c6, knight to f6, c4. We have e6, knight to f3, and pawn to d5. Uh, the queen's gambit declined is on the board. We have knight to c3, uh, and now pawn to c5. Again, uh, this uh, three knight system of the uh, of, of the setup, and now the uh, Yusuf of Rubinstein system with pawn to e3. Uh, we have knight to c6, a fairly a uh, rare move, usually you just capture in the center, but okay, knight to c6, we have a3, and d captures on c4. Uh, so transposing into the symmetrical tarash, we have bishop captures on c4, and now pawn to a6. And here, uh, castles uh, is the absolute top move here, pretty much everyone plays it, and there are some games where d captures on c5 is played. Uh, but here, Alireza goes back bishop to a2, and it's not uh, a new move, but it's uh, incredibly rare. Only one game where the move was played, uh, we have pawn to b5 by ding and now queen to c2 in that game that i mentioned castles was played but here we have queen to c2 and already as of move 9 we have a completely new game so what is uh, Alireza's uh, idea with this early bishop to a2 move? Well, okay, let's see. C captures on d4 by ding. We have e captures and bishop to b7. Nicely fincatoing the light square bishop. And now pawn to d5. Alireza just sacrifices a pawn. For, for what reason? Uh, well, let's see. E captures on d5. D, uh, ding captures it. And you should. It is um, uh, best to capture it right away. Uh, and now, <laughs> uh, in the previous game, uh, first Alireza makes some sort of a sacrifice. And then he starts thinking. So this is the first real think of the game. And Alireza spent some 20 minutes pondering on bishop to g5, which he did play. Uh, and here, uh, Ding just replied bishop to e7. Doesn't look like uh, all, all that much. We have rook to d1 by Alireza. Now putting more pressure on this d5. Uh, d5 pawn uh, with the bishop here attacking one of the defenders and the ding just advances it. We have pawn to d4. Uh, or you could, uh, you know, have it stay on d5 as a target, but ding feels comfortable advancing it to d4. And it is still perfectly fine. Uh, we have castles by Alireza. Of course, the knight cannot be captured. The queen would hang. And now castles by ding. And here just rook f to e1. And for the price of that one pawn, uh, ding, uh, well, Alireza has now uh, developed all of his pieces. And the ding, after some 25 minute thing, uh, goes pawn to b4. And it is very strong. It puts pressure on the knight. Now you have to decide uh, what to do here and you could just move it back knight to e2 you go after the d4 pawn and it's perfectly fine but alireza goes bishop to b1 just puts pressure on the h7 pawn and yes it's defended by the knight but you can easily capture it idea is that if it captures on uh, c3 you're gonna capture on f6 uh, then g6 has to be played in order to avoid checkmate and after let's say bishop captures on e7 and knight captures you will win back your d4 pawn with an attack on the queen and once the queen moves you will also pick up the uh, the c3 pawn and you're just gonna be up a pawn and okay queens get traded off captures captures and the problem is if you um, capture on f3 or let's say bishop captures you will see rook captures on e7 of course um, and not doubling the pawns and now after rook f to e8 idea being that if you, if you trade and pick up the bishop then there's this rook to e1 check picking up the bishop on b1 so rook to e3 will be played and something like bishop to c6 and this is the position you would get uh, alireza would be up a pawn it's a it's a force line so this is exactly what we would see so of course ding doesn't go for that he plays pawn to g6 just stops checkmate and um, uh, has this threat of b captures on c3 so ding uh, alireza goes rook captures on e7 
And now, uh, what can you play here? Well, you can't waste time with big captures on c3 now, as the bishop on b7 is hanging as well. So the rook must be captured. We have knight captures on e7, not queen captures on e7. If you play queen captures, looks nice as it moves the queen away from the d file, but then there's knight d5, attacks the queen and the knight here, and after, well, there's no after. You, uh, you move the queen and you lose the knight, uh, or you uh, give up your queen and, uh, well, it's just not enough compensation. It's going to be uh, a knight and the rook for the white queen. Of course, this is completely winning for white. So instead, after rook captures on e7, knight captures on e7 is played, and now comes rook captures on d4, attacking Ding's queen uh, on d8. And now, what would you play here? It's uh, your queen is hanging, uh, your knight is hanging. Is there is there a way to solve your, your problems here? Uh, well, uh, Ding played the queen to c7. Point being that, okay, the knight is hanging, but also this knight uh, is hanging. So it's not, a, it's not a big deal. But this is the move that loses the game for Ding. The real move after rook captures on d4 was this knight e to d5 move. And it looks very silly. You know, now the queen, uh, this knight is pinned. The queen is behind the, the bishop. Uh, also, this knight is pinned. You have to, you know, a double self-pin, if you will. Uh, and then after knight to e4, going after the knight, you just move the queen, unpin from the d file and you sort of control everything if a captures on b4 then you can play rook a to c8 attack the queen and once the queen moves you're gonna go rook f to d8 and you uh, you know develop everything the, the game continues nothing really happening here however ding played this queen to c7 move and he didn't really use that much time he spent like five minutes uh, on this position uh, but now his position is dead lost, and I'm pretty sure you guys see it. But just in case, feel free to pause the video and take down the reigning world champion while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that, uh, well... The, the 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 check does does exist in chess and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it is knight to e4 and this opens up an attack uh, on the black queen which is undefended and also on the knight on f6 which is undefended and the problem is uh well you can't trade queens but it's uh kind of your your only option because if you go let's say you go knight f to d5 you want to defend your queen it's uh, not really defended you're, you're going to capture it and after knight captures this leaves the knight on e7 undefended and now you're just um, uh, uh, up to much material uh, and the other move that you might think is let's play knight captures on e4 can we give up the queen this way well not really if queen captures and you play knight captures on g5 uh, literally any move for white wins you can also just recapture and again you're just up too much material black has zero compensation here so after knight e4 queen captures on c2 was played ding has to go into this endgame being down a piece and okay alireza takes it knight captures on f6 with check king g7 and bishop captures on c2 and okay alireza did sacrifice the exchange uh, so if you count the pieces now there's a, a rook on e each side a knight on each side and a bishop on each side and uh, alireza will have a bishop and knight for a rook on a8 uh, and that's uh, that's a lot of material so okay rook a to c8 going after the bishop on c2 but alireza uh, isn't tricked by the, this attack on the bishop he just plays knight to g4 and uh, it's also uh, you know uh, very very useful that uh, if rook captures on c2 is played you of course don't go after the knight on e7 you just checkmate the black king bishop to f6 check the king cannot go to h6 king j8 and knight to h6 will be checkmate that's why knight to g4 is so so strong so knight to g8 is played and now just bishop to b3 you don't have to worry about the back rank the bishop here is covering the c1 square so b captures on a3 b captures now rook to c3 and of course rook to b4 putting pressure on the bishop and inviting ding to capture on f3 it looks great you will win back some material uh but um uh of course alireza does this with a, with another trick up his sleeve a ding goes for bishop captures on f3 g captures rook captures and now just knight to e3 trapping ding's uh, rook on f3 discovered by the bishop by the bishop discovered by the knight king g2 will just win the rook uh, or well win the exchange ding will of course capture something so it's not that ding would fall for this if it was a regular position but he knows he's already lost and he's just trying to reach move 40 uh so someone you know doesn't uh, post uh, online that ding lost in a miniature to alireza you know 
uh, avoid all the all the quick news. So here, pawn to h6 attacks the bishop. We have bishop back to uh, sorry, bishop back to d1 attacking the rook on f3, and now just rook captures on f2, saying, okay, uh, you win my rook, I will take your bishop, but at least I will win a pawn while I'm uh, at it. But Alireza says, nope, no, you won't. Bishop captures on h6. He also grabs a pawn with tempo, and only then will he capture the rook. So, okay, knight captures on h6, king captures on f2, and now rook to d8. And now this is, of course, completely unplayable for black, but Ding will try uh, at least uh, to reach move 40. Uh, Alireza has 13 minutes on the clock, so maybe, you know, 10 moves uh, for 13 minutes, maybe he messes it up. Uh, we have rook to d6, and now bishop to b3. Of course, um, very hard for Alireza to mess this up. He will just now go after the a-pawn uh, that, that cannot be stopped, and then you just advance your past a-pawn to victory. That's one way to do it, but in this position, there are many ways to do it. So rook to f6 is played, uh, pawn to a4, advancing the pawn as far as, as possible before capturing an a6, uh, rook to c6, and now just bishop to c4. We have pawn to f5, Ding will also try to create some sort of a, a pass pawn uh, a gameplay. Now rook to b7 with check, king to f6, and now even rook to h7. Alireza being uh, engine-like uh, uh, precise here, just going after the knight here. The bishop covers the light squares, and uh, the knight has to be traded off. So knight to g4, Alireza happily trades, we have captures, captures, and now just bishop back to d3 going now after the uh, g6 pawn so rook to b6 and now rook to a7 uh, not going after g6 but after the a6 pawn rook to b2 check we have king to e3 and rook captures an h2 so ding does create the pass g pawn but alireza also creates a pass a pawn with check we have king to e5 now comes rook a5 check king to f6 and now king to f4 and he was in this position on move 43 that world champion ding lear and resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh, of course you you are down a full piece and there is no there is no uh, counterplay here you cannot advance the pawn you cannot defend the pawn uh whatever white plays is completely winning here it would be pointless to continue and since uh, we've already reached time control it is uh, will not uh, be having any time problems there's no reason for ding to continue the game uh so yeah a tough break for world champion ding lear and losing another game uh but yeah okay he has been absent from classical chess for a very long time for over a year and it will take time for him to to get back into it uh, but uh, hopefully he will be ready to, uh, to to play some serious chess when it's time to defend his World Chess Championship title. And yeah, great uh, great uh, victory for Alireza who takes down uh, a World Champion in classical chess. That's something not everyone uh, you know can just add to their resume, uh, but Alireza does so. So brilliant stuff. And uh, with this victory, uh, I think uh, Alireza uh, joins the leaders. Yeah, for the moment, as uh, all the other games are still being played, only uh, one game ended in a draw. Uh, Alireza does join Anish Giri uh, in the lead, but probably some other players will also join them after uh, after the round is over. Uh, so yeah, uh, what are you going to do? That's how chess works. Uh, one day you give your opponent a lesson, the next day he gives you one, as our good friend Bobby Fischer said. So this day Alireza was the one uh, giving the lesson. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Johan Klesens, Len Herbert, uh, Yun Young, uh, an, an anonymous person, and Christopher and Ruth Burkett for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the Tata Steel uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.